Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk to you about some common issues in narrative synthesis. So we'll have a look at some of the criticism of narrative synthesis, and then we'll look at what's currently been reported in synthesis when we can't meta-analyze. So really, we're going to look at some of the problems around narrative synthesis. So firstly, criticism of narrative synthesis. Well, as Hilary's already mentioned, there really is a lack of clarity about what narrative synthesis actually is. There's a lack of agreement about the terminology that's used. Some people might say they're doing a narrative synthesis, others say they're doing a qualitative synthesis, and yet others say they're doing a non-statistical synthesis. And yet, sometimes when you look at reviews with these, with these names, it turns out they're all doing something similar. And on the other hand, sometimes when some people say, when several reviews say they're doing a narrative synthesis, but actually when you look at the methods of what they've done, they're doing something completely different. So it is confusing about what are people meaning when, by, when they say they're doing a narrative synthesis. This is not helped by the fact that there's hardly any guidance or discussion of what to do when we do a narrative synthesis. And it leaves many people wondering, well, what is this narrative synthesis method? What does it involve? And yet others say, is it even a method itself? So Cochrane Handbook in the new chapter 12, it does recognise that narrative synthesis can be problematic. And another criticism that is a, reflected in this quote that we have here from chapter 12 is that it can be difficult to set out or describe results without being selective or seeming to be selective or emphasising some findings over others. So really, ideally, authors should be set out in the review protocol really clearly what they are going to do for this thing they're calling narrative synthesis. So we thought we would have a look to see what was currently being reported when people can't meta-analyse. We wanted to look at that because of this confusion about, well, what is it and the lack of guidance. So we thought, well, we'll look to see what is being done and that'll tell us what people mean when they say they're doing a narrative synthesis. So what we wanted to look at was what methods have been used when people can't meta-analyse and what information has been reported for that synthesis. So we looked at two sets of samples of systematic reviews. We looked at systematic reviews of public health interventions. Now some of these were Cochrane, but most were not Cochrane reviews. We also had the sample of Cochrane reviews that Hilary mentioned earlier. So we had these two sets of samples of systematic reviews, and we took a subset of them, and we wanted to look more closely at what methods they were reporting and what was being done when these authors couldn't meta-analyse. So some of the reporting issues that I'll tell you about today that we looked at were in these reviews where the authors couldn't meta-analyse, did they state the synthesis method they were using when they couldn't meta-analyse? And did, in these reviews, were the details of the synthesis they used when they couldn't meta-analyse, were these reported? In these, reviews, did, in these reviews, did they refer to any methods guidance or what they were doing when they couldn't meta-analyse? And did they make clear links between the data and the narrative? So by that, I mean, did they set out the data in tables or charts? And then if they did set out the information in tables or charts, was this set out in a way so that the information that was presented in, in the tables and charts reflected what was reported about that data in the narrative text? So what we found, first off, with the public health systematic reviews, were that around a quarter stated the synthesis method that they were using when they couldn't meta-analyse, and hardly any were reporting details of the methods they used when they couldn't meta-analyse. Around 13% reported referred to methods guidance, and around a half were making clear links between the data and the narrative. And for the Cochrane reviews, it was more or less a very similar picture. So around a half were stating what method they used, 18% reported the details of the synthesis they were doing when they couldn't meta-analyse. 10% referred to the methods guidance. 
and around a third were making clear links between the data and the narrative. So it seems to be that there is a problem with unclear reporting when review authors are, are unable to meta-analyse. It seems like all the data from the included studies goes into some mysterious magical magician's hat and with a bit of a wave of a wand and an abracadabra out pop the conclusions without us really knowing without what's happening in that middle section. The, the synthesis does seem to be a bit of a mystery. And that's completely at odds with the transparency that's expected in systematic reviews. And the problem of not clearly reporting the methods is that if we don't report what synthesis methods we're using, then that means that the review user isn't able to, to understand or assess what was done to synthesize the data. And then if they can't understand what was done to synthesize the data, then really they're left being unsure whether they can trust the review findings. So even if the synthesis methods were completely robust, if they're not clearly reported, then the review user is unaware that robust methods have been used. So that can lead to um, a lack of trust and otherwise high quality reviews. So we think that really we can't just ignore this, we can't stick our head in the sands, stick our head in the sand, and that improved reporting really is required. <clears throat> 